Hello, welcome to our devotional. I'm very excited about what we're going to be discussing today. Today we're going to talk about inner beauty. And um, I am excited because I think this is very important. I think this is the main thing. I think this is the real deal. So inner beauty is amazing. We've talked about outer beauty and different aspects of outer beauty. But I think that inner beauty is even more important because no matter how beautiful a packaging is, no matter how wonderful it looks, if what is inside doesn't interest you, if what is inside is rotten, if what is inside is bad, if what is inside is foul, the packaging is not going to matter at the end of the day. So the packaging would attract to you and you say, oh, this is a lovely pack or this, is, this looks beautiful. But at the end of the day, you're going to open it and find out what's inside. And what is inside is what's going to determine long term whether you really like it or not. So inner beauty, as I said, is the main thing. And we're going to divide it into two. We're going to divide it into conduct and we're going to divide it into conduct and then um, spiritual attributes. As we all know, man is a spirit, has a soul and lives in a body. So we've talked about the body, we're going to talk about the soul and the spirit today. So join me as we delve into this beautiful, beautiful topic. Okay, we're going to be going into the word. We're going to read from Proverbs chapter 11, verse 22. And it says, as a jewel of gold in the swine's snout, so is a fair woman, which is without discretion. And I will just paraphrase. It says, as a jewel, a gold ring, a diamond ring, is on this swine, so like a pig's nose. You know, you know what they call snout. This pig, pig has a really, really big nose area, and. The Bible is saying here, it's like putting something that's very precious, something that's very beautiful on a pig. Now, a pig is one of those animals that God had commanded the children of Israel. Not. It was one of those animals that God had deemed unclean. And even today, we all know when anyone refers to a pig, a person is referring to someone who is referring to dirt, unclean, unwholesome. Even though some of us love to eat pork and love to eat sausages and bacon, the truth is most people regard a pig when you talk about the animal as a dirty animal, isn't it? So the, the pig, in the context of this passage, in the context of who the writer was referring to, was saying a very, very low, low animal. So it's not like a lion or an elephant or a giraffe, an elegant animal. So it's one of, like a low animal and it says you put something that's precious, something that's beautiful on a, on a pig and that's what a beautiful woman whose conduct is unwholesome, that's what it looks like. A beautiful woman who is not smart, a beautiful woman who is not wise, a beautiful woman who doesn't know what to do. That's the picture and that's, this is the Bible speaking. And I think what it's drawing at is even outward beauty has to be embellished by inward beauty. That's what it's getting to. So when someone sees you and you're beautiful on the outside, they also hope you're going to be beautiful on the inside. And when they come close to you and they talk to you or they watch how you behave from afar, they watch how you carry yourself, people are looking to see is she really what the packaging says? Is she really what she looks like? And if you're not what you look like, you find out that people come close to you and after a while they'll just drop off. But they'll come close to you and after a while they're no longer interested. Why is that? Because what they have seen when up close isn't the same as what they've seen on the, out, on the outside. So it's very, very important as much as we walk on our outside, we walk on our inside. So we're going to be speaking about conduct, the way you conduct yourself, your manner, your behavior 
it's very important very very important even in the olden days um in our culture when people say oh this uh, the people want to you know refer you for marriage or um how do we put it people want to um people suggest oh why don't you look at this person's daughter why don't you look at this other person's younger sister i think that people say oh she's beautiful but people also want to say she's well behaved because everyone knows beauty isn't everything they want to say she's beautiful even if she's not beautiful they want to say she's well behaved she's from a good home she's been brought up well so these are the things that are important now when someone meets you for the first time they see you what next are they going to want to speak to you before they even speak to you they want to see how your body language is and all that many people many people when they see you for the first time uh, you see someone someone admiring you for the first time many you know young ladies rather than smile and make eye contact you just roll your eyes you know that even if you're not interested you don't have to be interested but you want to leave a good impression you want to make a good impression it mightn't even be that person it might be the person's friend it might be the person but it mightn't even be that person's anybody but this person should be able to say oh i saw this lady and she has she she, she made a good impression on me so you meet someone for the first time no matter where it is a good smile give a nod you you seem approachable that is what makes people some people say oh no one ever approaches me no one ever asks me no one ever says hi to me sometimes it's because you've not smiled sometimes because of the way you've carried yourself you made yourself look like a snob you've made yourself look like i mean you made people feel you're offish or you're proud and when you give people that impression they're reluctant to approach you they're reluctant to come close to you i know this very well so but if you smile you make good eye contact you say hello you are more likely to say hello back to you and um, conversation is more likely to be initiated just because of how you have conducted yourself and as i said you don't need to be interested in the person it's not going to make you look loose and some people say oh, if you say hello it's going to make you look loose it's going to make you look easy by no means is going to give a good imp- an overall good impression um, when someone meets you so you smile you say hello you make good eye contact um, you're polite so even if the person says oh um, I like you I'm interested in you you know how you know guys come on you say you're not interested but you say it in a very nice way oh I'm, I'm grateful for um, your compliment well, thank you for saying that, but um, I'm really not going to be able to make it or I'm really not at that point in my life at this moment or I'm not really interested in looking, I'm not looking into building a relationship at this point. Well, thank you all the same. You know, when you do that, you, you're you highly recommended. You know, people go away feeling, oh, she's she's a very nice person. People go away feeling, oh, she she's, she's, she's really good. And... It gives, it gives a good impression. Don't forget, we represent God's kingdom. We're representing Jesus. We're representing God. You want to make the right impression as a child of the kingdom. Amen. So, you speak very well. Have a good tone. You're not a quarrelsome person. That's the other thing. You know, especially when you're in a small community, like you're in a church all together. You know, you're very loud. Someone who's, oh, I, I say how I feel. I, I say what I want to say. I don't care. You know, that's the truth is that's that's not that's not the right attitude, and that attitude is not attractive. I'm sorry, but it's not attractive. Oh, I said how it is. I said how it is. I said what I want to say. I don't care. And you just you know you talk loudly. You shout. You quarrel. You take you know. All that is not doesn't it doesn't give a good impression. It's not attractive to see, because a woman. You see, wherever the Bible talks about woman, they want to say woman should be quiet. You must learn quietly. There's, there's, there's an overall impression you have about women, even though people say, "Oh, it was in, in, those were the dark ages." Um, but you look at the Bible, and Bible is still our standard today. 
And woman's conduct should be quiet. A woman's conduct should be, woman should be reserved, should be homely, should be calmly. I'm not saying don't say, you know, become an oppressed human being, be a, a doormat and things like that. No, but there's a right way, there's a right time, there's a right tone to express yourself. And that is the truth. And you would still make the same impact. You would still make your point. You, but you would come across better. And that's what I'm trying to emphasize. So the way you speak is very important. The way you carry yourself. Men like women who are feminine. They don't like men, women who are masculine. Some people do, I guess. But I think the general consensus, consensus is a woman should be feminine. You carry yourself like a woman. You walk like a woman. You talk like a woman, you know, you have all the graces of a woman, the all the graces of a lady. For some people, it doesn't come naturally. All these things some, for some people doesn't come naturally because it could depend on, you know, man is the product of nature and nurture. So it depends on how you're brought up. So you can begin to develop your femininity um, and carry yourself well. You watch how people carry themselves you know how you know women people who people consider as feminine see how they carry themselves the people you admire see how they carry themselves see how they walk see how they talk see how they do and and begin to do you know and before you know it it, it would become you and that is the truth so um learn all those feminine graces speak with the right tone don't raise your voice you know in some quarters like in a royal family and you know, where people are brought up in particular ways, women don't raise their voices, women don't shout, women don't scream, women don't curse, um, and all that is for a reason. And the truth is, you find out that the more polite, the more courteous, the more feminine you are, is the same way people are going to treat you. That's why you come to an office and you see um, people treat a particular woman, there might be two married women, but you see people treat one different from how they treat the other is the way they carry themselves. So you see one who is more feminine, more reserved, more, con more in control, people treat her in a different way. People are more polite to her, people don't cuss around her, people don't speak to her anyhow. But the person is always, you know, who's a street person. You see people really relate to that person in a different way. Whatever works for you, that's the truth. But there's a kind of respect you command when you have the feminine graces, and that is the truth. That is true. So the way you conduct yourself is very important. Very, very important. Are you gentle? Are you grateful? Are you someone who says thank you? Someone who says please? Someone who needs to say I'm sorry? All these things matter. It shows that you're a considerate person. Someone who thinks about the others. You know, whatever you do, you always think about other, you always have other people in mind, you have other people in focus. It's not always all about you. Oh, me, 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 me. You know, you always think about, oh, how about this person? Come into a place, you have to, you know, has everyone had this? You always think, okay, someone else is going to use this after me. And you keep things nicely. You're tidy, you're, you're organized. All these are things that make you look attractive. You know, for some particular people, all these other things that make you look attractive, and I think all these things are important. So, the way you conduct yourself is very, very important. Are you intelligent? And when I say intelligent, you don't have to be, you know, like an A student, a first class student, a two one student, but you have to be strategic in the way you 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 plan your life. So, for some men, it's attractive to have a woman who is smart. Who knows what's going on? Who has some credibility? So you know what's on the news. You know what's happening. You know, oh, Big Brother Nigeria is on. You don't need to know what's going on. I'm not one of those people who is stuck on watch. But at least you know what's going on. You know um, what's on the news. You know what is happening. You know a few things about things that interest men, like football, like current affairs, like politics. You know a few of those things, not just the general things, but these are the things that help you to make conversation. Especially, there's some quarters you go into, there's some meetings you go into, there's some circles you would get into. And these are the things people talk about. You have to be able to contribute, you have to be able to bring something to the table. You find that people who are able to bring something to the table when others are speaking about sports, politics, the things that are kind of 
male dominated. You find that the men are always curious. They're always impressed. They're like, oh, so you know about this? Oh, I'm impressed. Oh, so you, it's, it's, it's attractive to a man. It's, it's, these are the things that leave a lasting impression. And someone meets you for the first time. And sometimes you might not even have it all together. But you leave that impression on this person, the person can't stop thinking about you. It is a bit charming to know what's going on, to be a bit mysterious. Don't leave everything, don't leave everything on the table. Don't let everyone know what cards you're playing. It's good to have a bit, that's why I said, it's good to be a bit reserved. It's good to be a bit reserved. So you leave people guessing, you leave people wondering, who was that person, who was that person? All those things are intriguing for, for the opposite sex. Rather than when someone knows, sees you, meets you for the first time, person knows where you're from, person knows where you live, the person knows what schools you've attended, person knows everywhere you've been to, person knows everything about you, knows all the names of your brothers and sisters, knows about your parents, knows everything about you on the first date. Different things work for different people, but I think it's good to, you know, leave them wanting, just have this cliffhanger thing and you give give a little, just a little of yourself and have some that you keep back. It's not everything you need to give on the first date or on the first day someone meets you. Those are things that leave leave you, leave people wanting more of you. Leave people going away and thinking about you. You make a good impression and people can't stop thinking about you. So these are the things I think are very important. I've talked about charm. Charm is, is a bit intangible. Some people, for some people, it comes naturally. They just know that they just have a, their way around people. They have this good this smile. They have a way they they carry themselves. They have a way they speak. They have a way they behave. That's just interesting. That's just attractive. Some people have it, and some people don't. But even if you don't have it, these things can be cultivated. As I said, these things can be cultivated. So um, we've mentioned a few things which I think are important. Wear a smile, have a good tone, speak well. As I said, speaking well, even if it's not easy for you, you know, maybe, in, of course, English isn't that best language, but the truth is, if you want to improve, you will improve. There is YouTube. I said everything is on YouTube. You can learn everything from YouTube. You can learn how to speak like anybody in the world on YouTube. You can learn any language on YouTube. Everything is on YouTube. So let's utilize the internet in a more excellent way rather than just Facebook and WhatsApp and things like that. You can learn new words every day. You can learn how to carry yourself. You can learn how to be firm. You can learn how to put clothes together. You can learn anything on YouTube. So let's let's do this and let's improve. Let's improve. Let every day you're improving. You're improving. And you find out that before you know it, you're at a very, very high standard. Not at a very high standard, no one can reach you, but at a very high standard that you begin to attract the kind of mate you want. You begin to attract the kind of mate that other people are unable to attract because of how much work you put in yourself. Look, you are a resource. You are a resource. And just like any, any other resource, the more you improve yourself, the more you you work on yourself, the more you invest in yourself, the better you are, the better quality you are, and you have more to give. As people say, you cannot give what you don't have. You can't give what you don't have, but whatever you have, you can give. So if you begin to improve what you have, then you see you're able to give more, you're able to add value to people's lives, you're able to bring a lot to the table. And when someone sees you, you adjust the whole package. So I'm hoping we've covered a lot of things. We've talked about being polite, we've talked about being kind, we've talked about being gentle, we've talked about being grateful, we've talked about having good manners. All these things are very important. We go back to the world because this is this is this is important. You see, whenever the Bible talks about the way women should conduct themselves, it's always in a quiet way. It's always to be meek. It's always to be together. It's always to look after, look after yourself, look after your home. Those are the qualities people see, and those are the things that make you interesting. These are the things that make you attractive. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we have covered a few things and I'm hoping that these things would help you 
as you continue and as you embark on this journey to improve yourself and become the best version of yourself that you can be. And become the person that God has made you to be, the person God had in mind when he sent you. Amen. So I would begin to discuss the other aspects of inner beauty in the next Please remember to subscribe to his YouTube channel at Saint Vlog. Follow him on Facebook at Chukudum. Follow him on Twitter at Chukudum Oh.